But yeah, this was a wild game, man. I don't know about you, but I was kind of it's kind of losing it just a little bit cuz I actually had to have something cogent to say about this game by the end of it and I wasn't sure what I was going to have to say because Oklahoma goes up 3 to 0, 10 12 left uh, in the first quarter. You're like, "Okay, cool. You got off to a slow start. They got off to a slow start." And then Baylor decides to go full-blown Captain Marvel. And I don't mean like Carol Danvers when she's just fighting Jude Law in the little dojo. I'm talking about Carol Danvers when Annette Benning is like, we own you. And she's like, no, you don't. I own this. And I'm actually more powerful than Superman. That's what Baylor looked like for the first half. And the way that this was going for Oklahoma, I don't know, man. Like, were they in reverse? Because you're looking at Jalen and you're going, baby, what are you doing putting the ball on the ground? What are we doing? I thought we were over this. No, sir. We are both definitely not over this. There were six fumbles in this game. Oklahoma had five of them. Jalen had two of them, one of which was crossing the goal line from which we could have tied this game up and said, no, sir. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna have not tie the game up, get into a one-score game, right? And you're going, just when it's gonna, it feels like it's going to get better and this team is giving you hope and you're like, don't give me hope. Don't you dare give me hope. And I feel like we got to get that line in there, but I'm, I'm, pro I'm sorry I couldn't get it to you soon enough. And that's how we get all the way back to Thanos because I did that upload already. Points. Let's take it. Let's take it point by point here, right? Oklahoma did not feel like this was going to be the game for which there were going to be no turnovers because Baylor had put the ball on the ground 17 times. Eight of those had been takeaways for the other team. The only team that had more takeaways in the Big 12 this year going into this game, TCU had nine. So I felt like if Grinch's takeover defense was going to actually turn over, pun intended, it was going to be against Baylor, who wants to give you opportunities to take the ball away. However, I did not think that Oklahoma would be the one with the ball security issue, notably the star quarterback. And this is not a game for which Oklahoma needed to be the team with the turnover ball problem, with the ball security problem, because CeeDee Lamb, you might have noticed, didn't play. And what does that mean? It means that the guy who had 44 catches and was 17 yards shy of a 1,000-yard season, 13 tutties, wasn't playing. Next closest guy, Rambo. 27 catches, just over 500 yards by five touchdowns. It's a big gap between CeeDee and the rest of the team when it came to receiving. But you're thinking to yourself, yo, RJ, uh, uh, yeah, don't you think that Jaden Hazelwood and Theo Weiss and Trajan Bridges should get some run now that CD is sidelined for an undisclosed medical issue for which we all think is a concussion, but, you know, whatever, Lincoln doesn't want to say it, and it might not be, but he took a concussion in the last game returning punts, and we all know how we feel about CD Lamb returning punts, and no disrespect, but, like, Drake Stoop should have to be out there turning punts. Anyway, you don't have CD out there. So you're going, let's get the five-star wide receiver some run. Trajan Bridges had a touchdown catch against Iowa State. Jaden Hazelwood might be the best true freshman receiver Oklahoma's got. Theo Weiss is my favorite playmaker of this group of playmakers that he brought in. And what do we get? We get A.D. Miller. That A.D. Miller. The A.D. Miller I was making jokes about being actual dead in the last upload after the Iowa State bad win. Because... Ain't nobody expect to see no A.D. Miller out there. And then you throw in bombs to Nick Basquin and you wonder why to walk on. No disrespect to Nick Basquin. He fought through a lot. I enjoy him. But my man's walked on. Jaden Hazelwood, number one receiver in the entire country last year. And you going to, you go, all right. So we got that going for us. Okay. So after we got that going for us and no catches, not of significance. I mean, A.D. Miller had three, right? Rambo ends up with like five. You start to settle in, and you start to settle down after the end of the second quarter. And you get to see Jaden Hazelwood makes a great catch, 16 yards. Theo Weiss, sunning people on the way to the house. Austin Stalker had two catches, both of them touchdown passes. I know he's a four-star, not a five-star, but in this offense, he a five-star. And when you saw Lincoln start to adjust and feed the Brock to Kennedy Brooks, Jalen Hurts has 27 catches for 114 yards, but I don't want to get stuck on that. And you start to see him be committed to running the ball and not so much committed to Jalen Hurst throwing it, who threw it to the other team, and he's want to do that year of late, start to settle in. You score 24 points in the second half, and more to the point, the defense stopped Baylor. Didn't give up any points to Baylor in the second half. Baylor scored 33 points last year. This year, they went up 31 first half, nothing, nada. Zero points scored. 
after giving up 58 points in the last four quarters prior to those final two quarters, they didn't get any. And that was a bit good to see from Alex Grinch and his defense, for which we all had things to say. I think I missed the Super Chat. I want to try to get to this. Ramon P., love you, RJ. Does the committee see this as an ugly win or a statement win? It's an ugly win. Oklahoma's not going to get the credit that you would want to see them get because they're a 10.5 point favorite coming into this game with the one loss. Baylor was the team that needed to, to win this game close to just be like, hey, we're one of a handful of 10 win teams left, especially on a day that Minnesota took an L, right? So Minnesota took an L earlier today to Iowa and on the road, and that was a close game. And we don't have to have to talk about Minnesota anymore. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised to find out Minnesota left the chat, okay? Baylor was the was one of those last teams standing. They need to get a W not only to secure a spot in the Big 12 championship, but to show the rest of the country, including the committee, that they're here to stay. They are absolutely not. They might be back in the Big 12 championship game, but they will not make the college football playoff, not with the schedule, not as the way the committee's been treating it. Oklahoma's still a fringe candidate for this. If for no other reason, Tua Tonga Valoa is out for the season with a hip injury, and we all hate that. But you're going to treat Alabama a little bit differently. I don't think that you should because they still beat the hell out of Mississippi State 38-7, which is a team that, you know, Kansas State barely beat. And Kansas State beat Oklahoma. But West Virginia beat Kansas State earlier today. So, I mean, the, the Big 12 is a cannibal conference. That's the way that this is, right? The Big 12 circle of suck is complete. Yes, it is. I sent that tweet today. Everybody had beaten everybody, you know? Kansas beat Texas Tech. Texas Tech <laughs> beat Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State beat Iowa State. Iowa State beat Texas. TCU beat Texas. Matter of fact, Texas secured its second consecutive four-loss season. But didn't Sam Ellinger tell me that they were back after they beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl earlier this year in January? I thought he said they were back. Back to four losses. Achievement unlocked. Now, man, I don't know what to do with Texas. I don't know what to do with your man's Tom Herman. I don't think they're going to fire the man. And I thought that, you know, they was going to be pretty good. But when you run a death camp... During preseason camp, are you surprised that y'all drop like flies? Are you surprised that after you drive them to the end of the earth to try to beat LSU and you lose by seven to LSU, that they ain't got nothing left in the tank? And then Oklahoma State basically riddles what's left of you in a loss. Like, Texas won that game, but it felt like, you know, Texas lost more. Because now we're talking about Oklahoma State is going to be ranked next week after a really good win against Kansas, and Texas is not. Texas, with the four losses... Can't really do much better this year because they're not going to make the Big 12 championship game, right? So we're talking about perhaps an 8-4 and four Texas in a bowl game that plays in the Texas Bowl. That's where they at. I don't know if I would be really excited about Texas football at this point if I was a Texas Longhorn fan. Matter of fact, I'd probably be trying to find me a different head coach. But seeing as y'all just tried to find y'all a different head coach not three years ago, maybe you want to stick with this head coach, try to let him do what he need to do. Because all I hear is people trying to tell me that you ain't got players. That dude tried to tell me there ain't no players at Oklahoma. I'm a, he won't remain nameless, but he knows who he is. I'm going, nah, you got players at Oklahoma. You ain't got everybody that you want, but only Alabama, Georgia, Clemson can say that. And to this degree, even LSU. But LSU ain't even got that great a passing defense. And yet and still, here we are. So if you're Texas, you're going, Kane Stearns got back. I thought that was supposed to help you. Apparently not, because Brock Purdy still went full on. Brock Purdy, 350 yards passing. And now Matt Campbell is the first Iowa State head coach in history to, we to beat every Big 12 team. In a league that still wants to act like Texas A&M, Missouri, Colorado, Nebraska never existed. But Matt Campbell wasn't here for that, so we'll let it slide. Brandon Garcia, great win for OU, but I got a question about Texas. Should Texas give Tom Herman time to cut bait or cut bait? No, nah, I mean, they ain't, got, they ain't got no choice. Who you gonna get? Who you gonna go get? You know, they screwed up going to Nick Saban. I don't know if you heard about that story, but they was prepared to back up a truck to go to get Nick Saban. And it was vetoed by Mac Brown because Mac Brown wanted another opportunity to try to get things right. And in the year that they gave him to try to get things right, not only did Nick Saban just sour on the idea of going to the University of Texas, but they end up with Charlie Strong, Bad Strong. And that ain't go really well for them. I'm a Strong, Bad Strong fan. I like Charlie. I think Charlie's a cool dude. I like Vance Bedford. I think Vance Bedford's a cool dude. They wasn't getting it done at Texas, but they didn't get as much time as Mac Brown to try to get something done at Texas neither. Now, if you do that with Tom Herman... I'm not going to get mad because, like, word is out of Texas, they ain't too happy with him to begin with. I mean, the folks that actually got to play football for him, not the folks that actually got to cut his check. But as long as the people that got to cut your check ain't got no problem with you, ain't got no truck with you, you get to do what you want. Because you only need three things to keep your job and to get your job. You got to be good at your job. You got to be on time. You got to have people like you. You only need two of the three to keep your job. Tom Herman, his bosses like him, and he shows up on time. Whether or not he's good at his job seems to be immaterial because they're six and four. 
and at Texas, where they expect to compete for championships, and they put Sam Ellinger on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and they're supposed to be in the college football playoff, and all roads through run through Oklahoma, and now Oklahoma's sitting in first place in the Big 12. It ain't a good look for you, Tom. It's not. But I don't think that Tom Herman actually cares. I think Tom Herman thinks that he lives a different sort of life, like he's on a higher plane. And I don't think that's where he is. I think he's best at a place like the University of Houston where he gets to be the underdog and he gets to try to go recruit the hotbed of Houston. But that jam ain't going to be there for much longer because, you know, Dana Hogerson is in the process of tanking to get better so he can return what he hopes to De'Aaron King and Keith Corbin and try to make a run at this thing because they got an Alabama transfer. They got a couple other transfers coming in where Houston could be pretty decent and Americans going to be legit again. But if you ask me what Texas should do with Tom Herman, you ain't got no choice. You got to stick it out. You cut bait now, who you going to go get? Who do you think there is? Mike Norvell? Nah, he's going to go to Florida State or Arkansas. And that's really what it is, right? Because Tom Herman end up at Arkansas, it's possible, but it ain't a better job. You'd have to get you'd have to get fired. That's the reason why I would never take a Texas job. Like the only Oklahoman that I know that was brave enough to take a Texas job is Daryl Royal, and he had to stick it out for years to make that thing work out. And even then, the legacy that Daryl Royal has is, you know, being the last team with an all-white team to, to win a national championship ain't necessarily the one you want to kind of have. Plus, the stadium's named after Oklahoma. But, we are asking, should they cut bait? No. No. Ride out Tom Herman. Try to let him figure it out. You keep getting in top recruiting classes. I think Jake Smith has an opportunity to be really good. I think if they want to keep Roshan Johnson at running back, he could be cool. I think the Kendall... Kendall... Uh, Casey Thompson should get an opportunity to play. I'm thinking about Kendall um, Charles' kid that played at Oklahoma. But he ain't going to get an opportunity because Sam Ellinger is going to return because he hadn't been that good to, you know, good enough to go into the league next year. So that's what I'm thinking. Johnson, CJ, 2002. RJ, who would you rather play, LSU, Georgia, Ohio State, or Clemson? Give me Georgia. Give me Georgia, and I'll tell you why. I want Georgia because Georgia's offense has become stagnant and they don't trust Jake Fromm to cook. It's DeAndre Swift in parts. And if they let Jake Fromm cook, he's usually pretty good. But the fact that you're not getting production from your wide receivers like Dominique Blaylock or George Pickens or Demetrius Robertson or you're not really going to Lawrence Cager in a real way and that you don't get your tight ends involved, I'm cool with that. If I, I, I like that because what I've seen from Georgia is you haven't really been challenged by a first-string quarterback, and you haven't been challenged by a good quarterback to begin with. We're talking about the best quarterback that Georgia's faced all year has been Kyle Trask. Kyle Trask might be as good as Brock Purdy in the Iowa State. Like, that's, that's what you're dealing with. And what I saw today against Auburn is they couldn't really score. Now, granted, Auburn is really good up front. We all know about Derrick Brown, right? We all know about Big Cat Bryant. We know about what they got up front. And we know about Kevin Steele and his propensity to call these really outstanding defenses, some of which employ six or seven defensive backs at a time. But against Georgia, they got the defense. The defense plays well enough for the offense to be allowed to basically go three quarters with a two-touchdown lead. But if you can score on that defense, and I think Oklahoma can, that's where it is. Clemson is just balanced on both sides of the ball, and they're hurting people. I think they could end up in the national championship, and I don't think it, you know, it's really that close. Ohio State has been killing people. I don't want no truck with them. I think that's the best team in college football. And LSU has enough firepower to torch Oklahoma's defense. Just the long and the short of it. And there's enough talent in the LSU defense to give Oklahoma more than enough problems. You saw what Baylor's defense was able to do with Oklahoma in the first half today. And I think that LSU could do something and then some. Plus, they got my favorite freshman over there in Derek Stingley. Not to say nothing to Grant Delpit, who Mel Kuyper thinks is a top 10 pit playing safety. Then you got Jacoby Stevens over there playing safety. And you got Christian Fulton out there playing DB. Kayvon Chasen is out there in the middle. I like what they have. I think the LSU has every opportunity to win a national championship. But if you ask me which one of the four that I would rather play, it's got to be Georgia right now. Plus, we owe Georgia. We owe Georgia in a big way. There were people that wanted to skip Tanner Mordecai and go straight to Spencer Rattler during the middle of this game. Like, Jalen Hurts is in the middle of setting the record for passer efficiency rating in college football. A record, by the way, that if not had been broken by Kyler Murray, or excuse me, by Tua Tagovailoa, would have been broken by Kyler Murray at like 199 and change. And his passer rating is going to go down precipitously after this game. But he did have 297 yards passing. He did have four tutties through the air, 27 carries for 114 yards. Once again, was the offense. But I can't go so far as to think that Tanner Mordecai or even Spencer Rattler is a better option in this game or at that point. And the fact that you would even consider burning Spencer Rattler's red shirt because you're pissed about losing to Baylor 
this is why you don't run the team. Because I wouldn't do that. I know I wouldn't do that. I'd have rolled with Jalen. I also told him, cover the points, roll with it, put two hands on the rock, stop carrying that thing like a loaf of bread, and I would have left Tanner Mordecai over there on the bench. Okay, we're not going to do that. But we're also, who was Jalen going to pass the buck to? It was his fault that they were in the hole. I mean, he threw the pick. He put the ball on the ground. Like, you can't hide that. Like, who are you going to say? No, it was Lincoln who made the play call that put us in the hole? Nah. I mean, I get you want to give him props, but I'm not going to give somebody props for something I saw with my own eyes. I, like, he knew he was trash. We knew he was trash. If he'd have lied to everybody and said that it wasn't his fault, we would have had less respect for him. So, yeah. I mean, I get you. Uh, Jacob, Sooner Nation going to have our churches smelling like a brewery tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully our pastors understand and forgive us. Hey, Hash, man, we might have the pastors in there on one. <laughs> I, I know so many of you fans who are pastors. Good church going, man. They might be late for service tomorrow. <laughs>